Now, one of the other big pieces, maybe not as big as communications that's lumped together, is GPS. And it's actually, this is, GPS is often what people associate with space. That's right. So GPS stands for short for the Global Positioning System, or NAVSTAR, Global yes, Positioning System, exactly. as it was originally called. And this was originally a US military system. That's right. If you look at any military history, you see so many stories of soldiers were landed at the wrong beach, they dropped in the wrong place, they went the wrong way, and so yeah. on. And so the idea was a navigation system that stopped soldiers from getting lost. And GPS is actually one type of network as well. There's actually multiple of these yes. in different countries. So there's the uh, Chinese one, the European one, and the Russian ones. That's right. Um, and they all work on the same principle. They've all got a, a fair number of satellites, not as many as Starlink. Yes. I think it's about 24 for the GPS and similar for the other systems. That's right. And they're in intermediate orbit. So far, we've almost all talked about low Earth orbit or geostationary. This is one of the few things that sits in the middle. And it sits in the middle because it's kind of that right balance, I guess, between more stationary than low Earth orbit, but not too far away? Yeah, you want to be able to see several of these things at any given point wherever you are on the Earth. Uh, so you work out your position by triangulating, measuring uh, how long the signal's taken from one place or the next or the other. So, and this is what we're seeing here, is how many a single point can be tracking yes. in terms of satellites. So you could use Starlink to do this, and probably people do these days. <laughs> um, but back then, they couldn't build so many satellites. Yes. So by putting them a bit further out, that meant you didn't need so many to always be able to triangulate off at least three or four of those at any given point on the Earth. But you don't have the other problems of latency, which would also be a problem here. Uh, or latency crowding. is what you want. You're yeah. actually using the latency yeah, to yeah. measure how far away you are from these spacecraft. Yeah, so you want that kind of right distance, but not so far of geosynchronous orbit, which you have other problems of size and capability. Yeah. And, and in fact, the, the cost of launching these things is absolutely tiny compared to yeah. the market. So this GPS devices, that's everyone's mobile phones. So yeah, so, so the actual systems. satellite part is the small part. It's a tiny, tiny sliver of this. So mostly it's all the things that use it on the ground. So this is actually a good example of space and a relatively small investment in space leverages a huge economy on the Earth. And I don't think we have to explain how widely GPS has been used as we were seeing your location from your Google map uh, just a few minutes ago. Of course, yes. So there's a... Uh, Google Map and the uh, the draw. Uh, and of course, it's not the only thing that's used. That's right. That's right. That's right. We yes. also triangulate off mobile phone yes. towers if you have them. So GPS is only a part of the overall navigation, but it's a very important part. Yes.